Welcome to the semi-annual episode of YouTube Explained. In a very poor attempt to excuse the lack of videos on this channel, we are going to be talking about the prefrontal cortex today. What gives me authority to talk about mammalian brain anatomy? Google. <laughs> Google. Hello everybody, welcome to YouTube Explained. My name is Vinny, as I'm sometimes known, and I sometimes make YouTube videos. But due to my uh, underdeveloped prefrontal cortex, it's sometimes a little tricky. What is the prefrontal cortex? The prefrontal cortex is a very, very cool sounding word that you can use to impress your friends and family. And it is also the cerebral cortex which covers the front part of your frontal lobe. It's all very frontal. What does it do? What doesn't it do is what you should be asked. The prefrontal cortex's basic activity is the orchestration of thoughts and actions in accordance with internal goals. This wonderful and, well, newest part of the brain, uh, from an evolutionary standpoint anyway, has been linked to decision making, planning, personality, a person's will to live, personality expression, and moderating social behavior. In psychological terms, the prefrontal cortex relates to differentiating between conflicting thoughts, differentiating between good and bad, same and different, future consequences of current activities, working towards a defined goal, prediction of outcomes, expectation based on action and social control. It also plays a huge role when it comes to the individual deciding whether to engage in an activity which results in short-term gratification versus one that would supply a delayed but longer lasting gratification. It's also empirical to top-down processing. Now what is top-down processing? When we're talking about the brain, which is processing information that your senses are giving you, there are two ways of processing this information. There is bottom-up processing and top-down processing. With bottom-up processing, our brain is driven by the stimuli and the data it's receiving from the senses. This usually occurs when we encounter something that we've never encountered before, or we have to trust our senses to tell us what's happening and what it is we've just encountered. Top-down processing involves background knowledge that we've already acquired when processing stimuli. Take a look at this illustration, for example. Now, this is a great example of top-down processing. There is no cube in this actual illustration. These are simply dots with circles inside of them, but our brain knows where the cube is and is accustomed to seeing cubes and accustomed to pattern recognition and fills in the blanks for us, and that's top-down processing. Patients with prefrontal cortex damage often struggle with top-down processing as this is where most of our top-down processing comes from. Because of how new it is, it is also the part of our brain which is the least influenced by our genetics and the most influenced by our environment. I mean, it, it really is on the forefront of human evolution and understanding and, and it, would, it would explain why Homo sapiens were so adaptable to our environment compared to Neanderthals, which is why we are speculated to have survived over them and over other species, um, due to our just our ability to adapt to our environment and survive. It's also believed to be the reason for our sentience, which distinguishes us from any other animal, because no other animal has a prefrontal cortex as developed as ours. Oh wow, how amazing, how interesting too. Okay, so we've established prefrontal cortex, pretty cool, pretty important, um, you know, it's pretty much the part of our brain that makes us human, right? It's the adult part of our brain. Uh, makes us you know, be responsible and be able to process things and, you know, it's, it's, re it's just important, okay? That's why you should care about it. It's just important and cool to know about. But what does this mean in practical terms? Well, the prefrontal cortex you might be interested to know, doesn't develop fully until the age of 25. As teenagers, the synapses, which are the uh, links, the communication highways of our brain, are still developing and specializing. The axons in our brain are what are responsible for transmitting information from one neuron to another neuron. Over time, they are slowly covered in an insulating substance called myelin. This process allows information to be transmitted from neuron to neuron, to neuron to neuron, a lot quicker, obviously, 
my neurons, my, my, my myelin here isn't enough yet. I'm only 20, goddammit! And this allows for quicker decision making. And this process begins at the back of our brain, starting with the oldest parts, and slowly makes its way forward to the front. And the last part of our brain to basically be hooked up uh, with this sweet, sweet, sweet substance is the prefrontal cortex. And this usually happens around the age of 25. Now, reduced volume of the prefrontal cortex and interconnections to other parts of the brain are observed in people with mental disorders, those more likely to commit suicide, those incarcerated, criminals, those exposed to lead poisoning, and daily cannabis smokers. And studies have found that there is in fact a link between a child's socioeconomic status and the volume and interconnections of their prefrontal cortex. Stresses and upbringing and environment all can lead to a poor development of a child's frontal lobe, which, as I've said before, is very important. It obviously kind of sets them up for life. Uh, you know, your neurons and your, your, your synapses, you're only able to form new connections for so long. In fact, after the age of 25, for a few weeks, you're at your peak processing power, and then it's all downhill from there. So enjoy it. Jarring cut. So I wasn't really happy with the ending of this video. I don't feel I communicated what I wanted to communicate properly. So just so you know, I'm doing it again. Most things that I make, I've come to find, I make for me. I put myself and my happiness uh, as a priority, ironically. Um, hmm. I make videos because they make me happy. I do most things in my life because they make me happy. I mean, isn't that kind of the point of life? I mean, even if the activity doesn't necessarily give you short-term happiness, it'll give you long-term happiness, I and mean, that's why people do things that make them unhappy because they believe it will make them happy in the future, right? Prefrontal cortex, go. But I made this video because I was way too hard on myself. Um, and, and this is you know me speaking to myself and, and I guess speaking to people like me. Maybe there's a biological reason that I'm not as productive or I'm not as good as I want to be as a person. A message to myself uh, and message to, I think, a lot of people. It's just... Don't be so hard, Jesus Christ. So angry, so, so angry at yourselves for not being who you should be or who you think you should be. Well, I used to think that it was really good. It was a good thing I had. You know, be hard on yourself. That's going to make you, you know, uh, it's going to push you. But I don't know if that's true anymore. I think it does push you, but it can only push you so far. It pushes you until it pushes you off of a cliff. <laughs> and then, you know, there's own self-loathing can only get you so far. Guys, guys and girls, the more you know, don't use your prefrontal cortex uh, as an excuse, don't use your age as an excuse, don't let anything hold you back. Be hard on yourself, push yourself, but only to the point where it's helpful, and, and once it stops becoming helpful, um, stop it. Stop it. I haven't uploaded in four months. I mean, years and years of effort and work I've put into this channel. You know, I remember when I used to be dedicated and it terrifies me that maybe I've kind of fucked it up. Maybe I have. I don't know. Um, but I know that I won't be happy till I try it again. So yeah, I don't want this to be a depressing ending. It's not a depressing ending. It's positive. Because I'm going to be uploading more. And hopefully all of you amazing people that really supported me for some reason. Um, hopefully some of you are still here. And you still appreciate these videos. And, you know, I, I, I don't really know what else to say. Thank you, I'm sorry, and uh, try and be the best you can be, but not be too hard. Don't be too hard on yourself. For fuck's sake, come on. Don't be, god damn it.